Welcome back. I'm MTG Joe, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different than our gameplay videos. We are going to be walking you through the M20 core set draft archetypes. So from the arena subreddit, there were some questions frequently on the new, like Monday new user guide on how to draft or like what to pick kind of strategies and stuff. So I wanted to try this out. Um, basically walking through what the archetypes are. So kind of what the themes are when you are drafting cards to look out for, and then highlighting some of the bombs that are available in each of the sets. Um, so we'll take it through. Um, so there's basically five main archetypes in terms of color themes. Um, obviously with draft, it's based on your availability of what you actually open. But what I'm going to try to do is prioritize less on necessarily the rares and mythics, because those are, you're less likely to see those, and more on like commons and uncommons to really solidify a strong deck. So the first archetype that comes up is Jeskai Flyers. Um, so Jeskai is red, white, and blue. Um, so usually with these, uh, you could probably get away with blue-white flyers as well. Um, flying in general in draft is pretty good to have. Having evasive threats, especially ones that could come down early and pressure your opponent, is a great way to break through board stalls. In most formats, I typically prefer a flying deck. Um, generally, blue and white are those colors that offer you that, but it's not unusual to have red splashed in it. Um, so like the main mythic payoff card that you can get is Kyker. Uh, wins Fury, uh, so this rewards you whenever you play non-creature spells, creates an army of 1-1s and can get you to ramp. But really the uncommons and commons you want to be looking for are things like Empyrean Eagle, which is an anthem effect for your creatures with flying. Um, we have Boreal Elemental, which is basically uh, taxes your opponent to cast two more mana or pay two more mana to deal with it. Um, there's the rare Hang Executioner, which I really like for a couple different archetypes. It enters the battlefield as a 1-1, one -one, creates a spirit, so it's almost like a Lingering Souls, but has the added ability for 4 mana to exile itself to exile target removal. So it's a creature that creates another creature and acts as removal all in one package. Um, you have Lightning Stormkin, which is an aggressive 2-drop if you can get it out on time. Um, so Flying in Haste 2-2 is really good specs. You have Loyal Pegasus, is, which is a 1-mana 2-1 flyer. It does have the restriction that it needs other creatures uh, to attack or block, but overall it looks pretty solid specs-wise. And then you have payoff cards like Winged Words, which is really good card advantage at 2-mana if you have a flyer to draw 2 cards. Um, so moving on, you have the Abzan, so green, white, black, go wide ability. So go wide is generally referred to as lots of tiny creatures. Think uh, Selesnia tokens in standard as a, a, an analog. So some of the good payoff cards are Iron Root Warlord, so its power is equal to the number of creatures you control, and it serves as a mana sync late game to just keep pumping out tokens. So it can either be aggressive in terms of making tokens uh, attack, or you can keep having a stream of blockers for something like... Uh, the big uh, black dinosaur, the 7-6, that doesn't have any sort of trample. Um, you can also, like the 5 toughness is really good as a blocker as well early on. Uh, again, we have Hanged Executioner, it works well in this archetype as well. You have cards like Undead Servant, where if you can start drafting a few of these, especially with them being at Uncommon, um, they can start stacking and you can get a lot of zombie tokens that way. Uh, you have everyone's favorite Doggo, Ferocious Pup. It's three mana for two bodies. Uh, you have good instants like Raise the Alarm, which can be used as surprise blockers and traders. You have Master Splicer, which creates, again, two bodies for one card. There's a general theme. You're getting multiple bodies for one card. And then you can also have payoff cards like Might of the Masses that can surprise your opponent and basically smash them for a lot of damage that way. The, the Mythic for Abzan is more concerned about Legendaries playing it from the yard, I don't think it's as good in this type of archetype. 
Uh, next is Saltai Enter the Battlefield or ETB Control. Um, so a lot of the Saltai colors, so black, green, and blue, are focused around board control. So one of the big mythic payoffs is Yarek, the Desecrated. So this card is basically Panharmonicon Plus, so it doubles the uh, Enter the Battlefield effects of creatures and artifacts and stuff like that. Uh, it's also a 5-mana 3-5 Death Touch lifelink which is really nice specs on it. Um, also in the color schemes, you have probably one of the most powerful standout cards right now in standard in general, Risen Reef. This card's absurd. Uh, so it's great card advantage. Enters the battlefield, you either get to ramp yourself or draw a card. Um, and then it stacks with all the other elementals you can draft in the deck. And there's a lot of incremental elementals that might come up. Um, you have stuff like Tomebound Lynch, which is another really good 3-drop. Uh, so a Death Touch 1-3 can trade with a lot of stuff on the ground. Uh, it all has the Life Link, which is kind of incidental, kind of hedge your... People aren't going to be incentivized to block, so you can kind of buffer your life total. Um, and then when it enters the battlefield, you get to loot. And then whenever it deals combat damage, you get to loot. So that's basically drawing a card and discarding a card. So that's a way to filter through your deck if you need specific color mana or anything like that. Uh, Dungeon Geist is basically a reprint from Dark Ascension, I believe. Um, and this card was one of the houses in that format. So when it enters a battlefield, uh, you get to tap a creature and opponent controls. And that doesn't untap until Dungeon Geist leaves the battlefield. So it's basically locking down an opponent's creature with the fact that it's a 3-3 flyer, which is a good way to put pressure on your opponent. Uh, similar, you have Frost Links, which is basically one turn of locking down your opponent's creature, but that can get blockers out of the way, it can kind of slow them down in terms of a race. And if you could double it up with Yarek, if you are able to, or lucky enough to pull one, um, you get to tap down two things. It's also an elemental, which triggers Risen Reef. So you can start seeing the synergies that exist. Um, Saltai also gives you the best availability of removal, I think, in the format. Um, Murder is a nice, clean 3-mana destroy any creature, but you also have stuff like Agonizing Siphon, which is a nice tempo life swing. Uh, it can also burn your opponent's face for those last points of damage, so it's nice reach um, in that sense. Uh, then we have Mardu Aggro. So uh, Mardu is red, white, black. Um, so in this color scheme, like if you can get the uh, Mythic Angel, name's eluding me right now, uh, Kaya, Kalia, um, that's a great card to have, a 3-3 flying uh, Vigilance is very strong for 3 mana, um, but again we're just going to try to focus on stuff that's a little bit more obtainable, uh, especially in the common and uncommon slots. Uh, 3 mana Chandra and Knight of Eben are both very good rares if you can uh, get them in your packs. So Chandra, you're basically using her for her zero ability to con create a continuous wave of 1-1 one -one elementals with haste. Um, they get sacrificed at the end of the turn, but they are very strong in terms of pressuring your opponent. Um, in a pinch, if you have the removal, she can also flash back. So if you have something like murder, uh, you can cast it again from your graveyard with her minus ability. I really like Chandra in standard. I've been playing her in my team or elementals list. Um, Knight of Eben is a very strong one drop that can pump itself to give it death touch and then gets counters whenever opponent loses more life, uh, more than four life. Uh, Rounding it out, you have stuff like Ogre Siegebreaker. Uh, destroy t it has the ability to destroy target creatures if it was dealt damage. Uh, Audacious Thief, I had two of these in my sealed pool in a blue-black shell, and it's a very good card uh, in terms of card advantage. Um, so you can attack with it, you're guaranteed the card draw. Um, it's on attack, not on damage, which is a nice play. So even at the very worst case, it attacks it and you draw a card, it helps it there. Um, you have stuff like Sky Knight Vanguard, which is a 2-mana 1-2 flyer that when it attacks, you get to put tokens into play. Um, with the Evasion of Flying, it's a little bit easier to get those attacks in. Uh, stuff like Corpse Knight is when it enters the battlefield. Oh, sorry, whenever another creature enters the battlefield, the opponent loses one life. So that could work well as well in the Abzan list that we saw, which is go wide, just in terms of making your opponent lose life by not actually having to attack. So if it gets the board stalled, it's a good way to poke through those last points of damage. And then you have stuff like Goblin, Goblin Bird Grabber. Um, 
it's not a bad common uh, for one mana. It can gain flying if you have another creature with flying. So it's just a matter of making sure your deck can kind of support that. But it's 2-1 for 2 isn't terrible as a late pick, but it does have the added benefit of being a flyer. Uh, so the next one is Teamer Elementals. So the draft deck that became my standard deck. Um, so the big payoff is obviously Big Daddy Omnath. Um, so this has got a lot of text on it, but basically when it enters the battlefield, it checks the amount of elementals you have. If you have... Uh, so that can deal damage to any opponent, creature, planeswalker, whatever it may be. Then when lands enter the battlefield with Omnath down, you have to put a 1-1 counter on any of your elementals. And then if you have 8 or more lands, so if you're starting to flood out, you get to draw cards. Um, again, with Risen Reef, as I explained, great card, especially when you're going straight elemental focused. Uh, with elementals in draft, you're probably going to want to go a little bit more aggressive. So you have cards like Creeping Trailblazer, which uh, pumps up your team. And then it could pump up itself, again, with Lightning Stormkin, uh, an aggressive 2-drop. Stuff like Cloudkin Skier is a 3-mana 2-1 flyer, so you get the evasion, but it does cycle itself and draw a card. Um, there's Chandra again, the tokens. So if you have Risen Reef down and you use the zero ability of Chandra, those two tokens trigger Risen Reef, so you can get card draw or ramp that way. And then you have stuff like Scampering Scorcher, which enters the battlefield and is basically three bodies with haste uh, for one card, and those would all trigger Risen Reef as well. So if you get the cards, uh, Elementals is really strong, even if probably just a red-green variant. Uh, if you could stack a couple Trailblazers, that's a lot of power coming in. And then finally, Draft Bombs. So these are cards that if you can get them, try to get them. Um, the thing is with bombs, you can't really forecast that you'll have them. It's just depending what pack you have. You could be like me with Sealed Pool, where you open the Lotus Land, the Zombie Land, if you have eight different lands, I think it is, and just a bunch of cards like Graft Digger's Cage, which don't really do anything. Or you can be lucky and open any of the Cavalier Cycle. So I have three featured here, the Cavalier of Flame, of Gales, and of Night. But the Green Cavalier, the White Cavalier, they're all really impressive stats for the five mana that they cost to cast. Um, they're going to be probably want to be limited in terms of a two-color deck, uh, just based on the heavy casting cost in them. But it really depends on how many dual lands you're able to get with the gain life lands. Um, and then you'll have stuff like uh, Chandra, Awaken Inferno, very strong Planeswalker, again with Kalia, just a really good spec, uh, specs like 3-3 three, three Flying Vigilance with the fringe case that you can draw cards depending on what you get with those uh, types. And then Golos Tireless Pilgrim. If you can make it work mana-wise, this card is nuts. Uh, so it enters the battlefield, 5 mana, and you get to ramp yourself for any land. And then, if you can get to 7 mana, you can just start pumping out card advantage through it. So it's definitely an interesting card. Um, you'd have to try to get the support in terms of multicolor, but it's definitely something I'd be excited to try out in draft. Um, so that's that. Um, so what I'll do is, once the ranked, or the yeah, the best of one drafts come up on MTG Arena. I'll run through a couple of those videos on the channel. Uh, it's more of an instructional just to kind of fully kind of tune our thought process here in terms of actual what cards to pick and go through step by step with that. But let me know what you think. If I'm missing out any cards, if I'm overrating any cards, and what's worked best for you in draft in the comments below. If you do like this and want to support the channel, subscribing is a free and easy way to do so. It goes a long way to helping out. It costs you absolutely nothing. Thanks for tuning in and happy drafting.